How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now I've done a few videos on the new Z690 motherboards. I've actually done already a review and unboxing on the ROG Maximus Z690 Hero and also an unboxing of the Strix Z690E. But today we're gonna actually do a review on that Strix Z690E and pair it up with the 12700K i7 and see how it performs and also take a look at temperatures. Now pricing wise, the E is retailing for around $480 on Amazon if you can get stock or around 12,500 Rand for here in South Africa which is a quite a bit expensive. Now, if that's a bit too much for you, you do also have the option of just going for some of the prime boards or some of the tough boards, and they are slightly more wallet friendly, but the entire Z690 range is quite expensive. Now, the design of the Z690E is very much the same as the previous Z590E, which we'll actually took a look at, uh, with a more grayish color scheme and now, and also some silver accents that does look quite nice. Also, the IO cover and a VRM heat spreaders are a bit different compared to the 590. But the biggest difference is between the M.2s and also the PCI Express slots, but a bit more on that later. Now, the new Z690 platform does feature the new LGA 1700 socket for Intel's new 12th generation Elder Lake CPUs. Now, I mentioned I because I have heard this quite a lot. Unfortunately, you cannot use any of the previous generation CPUs on these newer boards so it's only going to be 12th generation Elder Lake CPUs so please just keep that in mind. Now like I mentioned before I did pair the E up with the i7 12700K and did run a couple of tests on a stock and then also on ASUS's AI overclocking ball settings which is available in the BIOS and from what all of that I've seen from the times that I've used it it does actually perform really well and just handles everything which is a one click over a clock and it's perfect for noobs or just enthusiasts who don't really want to mess too much with all of the settings. Now on stock, the 12700K was able to peak at 5 gigahertz, but averaged around 4.9 on all 8 performance cores and 3.8 gigahertz on the 4 efficient cores. With the AR overclock applied, I got sustained 5 gigahertz on the performance cores and 3.9 gigahertz on the efficient cores. Now I have actually seen 5.3 gigahertz on the 12700K on the Euro motherboard, so that was the peak, but also around a 5.1 sustained. And that was with a different cooler, a 360, uh, one of Asus's top of the range of coolers, which was quite a bit bigger than the cooler that I used. Now on stock running a Blender benchmark, I did get an average of 75 degrees and a maximum of 83 degrees for the 12700K. Then with the performance mode, I got an average of 85 degrees and a maximum of around 97 to 100 degrees, which again, I did cause some thermal throttling. So just to make sure again that your cooler will be able to handle that high heat output. And then of course, also make sure that your cooler will be able to fit on the LGA 1700 socket. And that is specifically designed for that. I did read somewhere that some of the coolers that's designed beforehand doesn't perform that well. I think that was the case with my cooler as well. Now, as for the VRMs, it is a 19 phase 90 amp design, which does look to be a nice upgrade from the 16 phases on the previous boards. For VRM attempts, I did reach a maximum of 52 Two degrees and an average of 51 degrees while on OC, which is extremely good. So overclocking shouldn't be a problem or for this board at all, for the VRMs at least. Now as for power draw on a stock, it did a peak at 180 watts and with uh, OC applied, it peaked at a 210 watts. So definitely a thirsty CPU. So make sure that your power supply will be up to the task. Now moving into a memory, the E does support a maximum of 128 gigs on it's a four dual channel DDR5 DIMM slots, which with an overclock does go up to 6,400 megahertz with an XMFP. Now with DDR5 being very limited and also very expensive, unfortunately, you will be able to find some DDR4 versions of certain Z690 boards. 
But unfortunately, it's only the case for on some of the tough and some of the prime boards for ASUS. Unfortunately, you do not get at this time uh, the Z690E with a DDR4 board, unfortunately. So it's going to be more the budget ranges with uh, DDR4 options. Now, with the new DDR5 memory, it is slightly different compared to DDR4. And there are actually a bunch of other good comparisons online already on YouTube. But in a short, DDR5 doesn't really increase gaming performance but that much a slight bit but uh, you do see some performance gains in a certain production workloads only certain but that's also just for now and maybe later on we'll see some games and some other uh, production workloads actually utilize the increased uh, speeds a more but we'll have to wait and see for that. But now moving on to the PCI Express slots, this is also where we do get a nice little upgrade compared to the Z590 range, and that is with a full support for PCI Express 5 now. The E does have a three full and a one 1X size PCI Express slots, with the top one being the only PCI Express 5 16-inch slot that does run off the CPU. The second is a PCI Express 4 slot running at 4X speeds, Primarily, this is going to be for the included Hyper M.2 card, which we'll get into a bit later. And then the third is a PCI Express 3 slot running at 4x speed. And that's just going to be for additional capture cards or so on. And then lastly, you do get a 1x slot for some additional add-on cards if you want to add that. Now, the top slot does also feature a super safe slot design for better durability when installing a GPU and just help prevent the board from sagging when you do install some of those really uh, big RTX 30 series uh, cards. But the coolest feature, which is also on uh, the Hero board, and I think it's only new to the Z690 range and also only ASUS uh, at the moment, I think, and that is their Q release button, which is just awesome. So what it does, it just helps release the latch that actually locks the GPU in a place and prevents you from actually needing to try and squeeze your finger in to release the GPU or use like a pen or something to release that latch because it can kind of get hard sometimes especially if you do have a tightly packed case so that's really a, just a, a nice time saver where you just have to press the button and it disconnects and you can just pull out your gpu just a nice additional feature which i appreciate now moving on to storage, you do get a one less slot compared to the Z590 E. Not really, but we'll get into that. But the top slot under that a massive heat spreader is a PCI Express a 5 M.2 slot perfect for future PCI Express 5 SSDs. Granted, I don't know if there are uh, some PCI Express 5 SSDs available, but you will be able to get that later on and just crazy speeds out of that. While the other two M.2s are only boring PCI Express 4 slots, so you won't really need that anyway. And then just lastly, you get the additional boring 6 SATA 3 ports. But now, if that wasn't enough storage for you, you do also have the included Hyper M.2 to card which does support an additional two PCI Express of four M.2s and it does also look pretty cool in a system just an additional card there but another new awesome feature from ASUS as well and this is also uh, I think primarily only on ASUS and that is their Q latch design that prevents you from actually needing your M.2 screws to screw your M.2 in a place which is sometimes a hassle especially if your system is already standing and you want to squeeze or replace your SSD without having to take everything apart so with this is you all you need to do is install your m.2 and just lock it in place slide that slider or that lock and that's it it's super simple and it just again makes your life that much easier and trust me i have to switch out m.2s quite often between some of the systems and it does get really annoying so having that is just going to be a lifesaver for me as well now then moving on to your io you do get your display port version 1.4 and an hdmi 2.0 ports for displays then you do also get your clear cmos and a bias flashback buttons four usb 2.0 ports four usb 3.2 gen one type a ports three USB 3.2 Gen 2 a 10 gigabit ports, one of them are being type C, and then also a USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 20 gigabits per second a type C port. Next, you do also get your 2.5 gigabits per second Ethernet port, your Wi-Fi 6E with Bluetooth 5.2, and then finally your audio ports.
Then as for the additional internal connectors, you do get the standard 24 pin motherboard power, then a dual 8 pin CPU power connectors, 8 PWM headers, three 5 volt addressable RGB headers that does run off a SUSUS or a SYNC, a single 12 volt RGB header, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A header, a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 Type C header, two USB 2.0 ports, your Thunderbolt 4 add-on headers, a noise sensor, your post LEDs, your Q code indicators, and your CPU over voltage jumper. Finally, getting into the benchmarks, the 1100K was kind of a disappointment last year when we took a look at it. And even though we unfortunately don't have the 1200K to compare it to, because I think that'll work perfect on this board, uh, I was still blown away by the performance of the 12700K. We compared it to the 1100 k and then also the 9900k and it did really well in games and even better in synthetic and production benchmarks in cinebench r23 it scored 6000 points more than the i9 11900k that's a 23000 score is just above the ryzen 9 5900x which is amd's second uh, top of the range consumer cpu and this is again an i7 that's bonkers now the thrashing continues in to a Blender, 3D Mark, and Corona, and where it just easily beats out the other i9s. So now with all of that out of the way, just like the previous uh, Z590 E Strix uh, board, this is going to be a great upper mid-range ROG motherboard. Compared to some of the other boards, it's just a high-end board, but in the ROG range, this is more an upper mid-range board. But it just pretty much delivers everything that really a gamer or a content creator really needs, and it's going to be a perfect fit for either the i7 or the i9. I rather say just rather go for the i9, because, depending on pricing, of course, because this board does kind of cost as much as a i7. So. Go for the i9 12 12900k and i think that's going to be a perfect fit for this cp for this motherboard now we will have to see how pc express r5 expands in the future for gpus and also for storage and networking let's say but i think it's going to be really cool to see so especially for a content creator i think pc express r5 is going to be really handy and this is where the strix z690e actually is really handy with that m.2 slot not all of the Z690 boards does actually come with a PCI Express 5 M.2 slot. So make sure about that if you want to future-proof and get that super fast speed. But also for your VRMs, that's going to be plenty again for the i9. And if you want to overclock, it's going to be able to handle that as well. Again, only reaching around 52 degrees on the i7 while also overclocked. There's plenty of headroom um, heat-wise for the VRMs. But anyway, that's pretty much it for my review. I do hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed it if you did please like share subscribe and comment like always also a big shout out to AC South Africa for sending the board over for review if you guys want to get it for yourself I will leave links in the video description depending if there's stock available which there isn't always but I do hope you guys get yours but anyway thanks for watching guys and I'll check all of you next time cheers guys